Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics. Today I'm super excited to bring you a species profile on a great community fish. That is the Panda Cory Cat. Hope you enjoy the video, appreciate you being here. So this is a 20 gallon long that houses our Panda Cory Catfish. There are about 12 of them in this 20 gallon long. Some of them are hiding behind the rocks in the wood. In this tank we also have a group of green neons, about 15 of those. And you might see, if we're lucky, we might see our snowball pleco hiding out amongst the rocks and the wood. This was originally set up as a quarantine tank. Technically it still is, but Joanna wanted to go ahead and add some decorations to it to make it look better even though it's a quarantine tank. So the Panda Cory Cat, this is a great fish as we're going to see throughout this video. They come from South America. The water there varies a little bit. Some, some of their region is black water. Some of it's a little bit more clear water. And at some points, the water can actually run a little bit cooler than normal tropical fish temperatures. The size of these fish, right now, these guys are a little bit on the small side, but usually a full grown adult cory, panda cory, is gonna get somewhere around two inches. The fish you're looking at here are a little bit smaller. The females actually get larger and rounder than the males, and that's one of the ways that you can tell the difference. By the way, if you are looking for panda cory cats, check out flipaquatics.com. I will put their information down in the description below. They are a channel sponsor. They sell great fish, so if you're looking for them, can't find them in your area, flipaquatics.com is the place to go. Now, in terms of their temperament, they, these are peaceful fish. Cory cats in general tend to be very peaceful, so you have to be mindful when it comes to setting up your tank and you're including Cory cats as part of your stocking options. You really do want to have that community tank feel without a lot of aggression. These fish can live anywhere from five to eight years. I think if you're getting to that five year mark, you're doing pretty good, but they have been known to live a little bit longer. Now, regarding tank mates, you have a lot of options here, but once again, you wanna make sure that you have relatively peaceful fish. If you want more information on some tank mates for Cory Cats, I will have a whole bunch of species profiles down in the description below so you can get more information. I think the first thing to consider is quarry cats often like to be kept in groups and so I would definitely try to keep them in groups of certainly no less than four but anywhere six to ten and you're doing pretty well because of that when it comes to the tank size you're probably looking at could you put them in a 10 gallon probably but as they grow up and if you've got six to ten in a 10 gallon tank that's going to look pretty cramped given their adult size of two inches and the fact that they're all going to be on the bottom of the tank a 20 gallon is a better option. Like I said, what you see here is a 20 long. Now other tank mates, I think you're safe with most non-aggressive tetras. So a lot of the neon types, the black neons, the greens, the standards, cardinal tetras, ember tetras work well. You can even go with some of the medium sized tetras like the black phantoms and the skirt tetras or glow light tetras. Pretty much all of your rasboras are options like your brilliant green rasboras, your emeralds, cherry barbs would work. Your smaller garamis, like your honey garamis and your dwarf garamis would probably be okay. Most of your live bearers are gonna work. So things like mollies and sword tails and platies and guppies and endlers. If you wanna do something and keep these fish at a little bit cooler temperatures, we'll talk about that more in a moment. You've got the Florida least killie fish that you could mix these guys with. Tiger limia would be another option. Otocinclus work well in, in your standard tropical fish temperatures. Bristlenose plecos, mystery snails, shrimp maybe. The, they, they will go fine with the adults. They might eat some of the baby shrimplets and you could certainly keep these guys with bettas. Now temperatures, as I mentioned before, a lot of times these fish in nature, they actually find themselves in slightly cooler temperatures. You're probably gonna be safe anywhere between 72 and 78 degrees. This tank that you're looking at here, we heat our fish room and that is usually fluctuating between 78 and 80 and they've been doing well in, at those temperatures. pH, you're gonna be fine anywhere from six to eight. Most of the internet says six to seven. Our pH is an 8.2. We keep quarry cats all the time. They live happy, healthy lives at that pH as well. Water hardness anywhere from three to 12 degrees is gonna be fine for your GH and your KH. We're on the higher end of that. We're around 10 degrees for both of our general hardness and our carbonate hardness. And like I said, they, they do well in our water parameters. You do wanna make sure that you have a well cycled tank. So quarry cats in a brand new tank that hasn't gone through the nitrogen cycle, which is ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate, 
this is not going to be a good thing because Cory Cats, because they spend a lot of their time at the bottom of the tank, if you wind up with ammonia or nitrite spike, you'll often find the Cory Cats are the fish that suffer the most because they have to try to get oxygen at the top of the tank and they spend a lot of time darting back and forth from top to bottom. So you definitely want to make sure you have a cycled established tank before you add your Cory Cats or just fish in general. Feeding the Cory Cat is really not hard to do. We feed all of our fish North Fin Foods. North Fin Flakes, North Fin Sinking Pellets have both worked really well for these fish. Cory Cats go crazy for live black worms. Frozen blood worms, frozen brine shrimp are all great snacks for them as well. I've even seen them munching on algae wafers. Again, tank size, this is a 20 long. Yes, there you could potentially put them in a 10 gallon. I just don't recommend it. I think a 20 gallon or larger is the way to go, given that you're going to want to keep these fish in a group. You can see what we've done with the tank in terms of decorations. Give the Cory Cat some places to kind of explore and hide. It doesn't have to be real rocks and real wood like we've done here, but it tends to work out pretty well. They're going to do just fine with plants. So if you have a planted tank, they might sometimes dig up some plants that they're not well rooted into the substrate, but for the most part, they're not going to go out of their way to eat the plants or uproot them. So live plants are certainly an option. When it comes to the substrate, most sources will tell you that sand is the safe way to go. And I would agree with that. Although a gravel substrate that doesn't have sharp edges may work just fine. The issue that you're going to have with gravel, especially if it's a little bit larger, is sometimes the food that you're going to feed the quarry cats gets wedged in that gravel and starts to make a mess and they can't get to it. So sand is, is the best way to go. You can see here that we've used a lighter colored sand. Quarry cats are a type of fish that is really quite impacted heavily based on substrate color. So when you have a lighter substrate like you're seeing here, they tend to keep lighter coloration. For some quarry cats, that's good. For others, maybe that's not what you want. If you go to a darker substrate like black, sometimes they start to muddy up a little bit and that's not necessarily ideal for, certainly for the panda quarry cats, they, I think they look better on a lighter substrate. If you're interested in breeding quarry cats, often what I think works best is if you put the adults in a 10 gallon tank, so you have a, a female, maybe a male, you have a pair, or maybe you've got a female and a couple males, what's gonna wind up happening is you definitely wanna feed them relatively heavily with high protein foods. A lot of people use live black worms, frozen blood worms, really get them on a high protein diet. That is gonna allow the female to produce lots of eggs when they mate the eggs, at least in, in my experience, they leave those eggs all over the place. You're going to see them on the front of the glass, the side of the glass, on top of leaves of your live or fake plants, sometimes connected to the wood. If you've got sponge filters in there, they'll leave them on the uplift tubes or maybe the intakes of a hang on back filter. So there's, there's going to be eggs in places you don't necessarily realize when you first notice them. The easiest thing to do is then just remove the adults and let the fry hatch. They usually hatch out within a couple of days. At that point, they're gonna be very small. We've had the best luck feeding live baby brine, but you could also use crushed flake. They also will feed in a well-established tank on infusorium, and eventually they will grow to a size where they will just accept regular fish food. Usually when you're trying to breed quarry cats, you wanna dial in your water parameters a little bit, make sure it's a little bit closer to ideal, especially for the fry that can be susceptible to temperature changes or changes in uh, ammonia or nitride. If that starts to appear in the tank, that can be a problem for them. So you really just wanna make sure that you've got very stable water parameters for your quarry cat fry. One word about feeding quarry cats, I know we've already talked about what we feed them. A lot of people think that catfish will just be a cleanup crew and so they'll eat fish waste or uneaten food or just food that's sitting there rotting at the bottom of the tank and that could not be further from the truth. If you are going to be keeping quarry cats know that they need to eat as well. If you've got a lot of aggressive eaters in your tank you should also be aware that maybe you are going to have to invest in some sinking pellets, some food that's going to be specifically for your quarry cats. They do not, do not eat fish waste. They will not eat rotting food at the bottom of the tank. And so you need to make sure that your quarry cats are getting food, that they're being fed properly because they're not just going to clean up the mess that are left behind by other fish. 
Cory Cats are a great addition to that peaceful community tank, but definitely keep them in a group of at least four, if not more. Six to ten is a great group. They have a lot of interesting personality. They're pretty goofy. Sometimes you'll see them forming a little pile of Cory Cats on the bottom of the substrate or on the bottom of your tank. They have an awesome personality. Highly recommend them. Hope you enjoyed the video. Appreciate you being here.